The Green Bay Packers are 3-5 and five on a four-game losing streak, and they're visiting the Detroit Lions, who are 1-6 and six on a five-game losing streak. Combined, they have a nine-game losing streak together. Jeff, my question this morning is who has more to lose? It's no question it's the Packers, uh, personally. Because if, you, if you're in Green Bay, not only that, but if you're Aaron Rodgers, there's, certain, there's a certain level of expectation in Green Bay. They haven't had tons of seasons where they're under 500. Most of the time, they're over 500, whether it's Brett Favre or Aaron Rodgers. So those expectations, and in, in, in for this year to be 3-5, and five, losing Devonta Adams, trying to acquire a wide receiver at the trade deadline, not being able to do it. They didn't want to pay a second-round pick for Clay Poole. They didn't want to, <clears throat> excuse me, they didn't want to overpay for Brandon Cooks. There is a lot of pressure on Green Bay this year. A lot of pressure on Matt LaFleur. Not that he'd be fired, but still. A lot of pressure on Matt LaFleur. A lot of pressure on Aaron Rodgers for them to get back into the postseason. Because we talked about it all before the season, how bad the NFC is. And with that being said, the Green Bay Packers were a team that, like me, like other people, thought would win the NFC North. Looking back, Vikings are a pretty damn good team. But it doesn't change the fact that the Packers have... I don't want to say they do have Super Bowl aspirations. I don't think that's a Super Bowl uh, caliber team even before the season, but they have have to at least make the postseason. And if you lose to the Detroit Lions after losing to the Washington Commanders, you lose to the Bills, which, uh, listen, the Bills lost. It is what it is. And then you lose to the Lions. That's a problem. That, that That's a real problem, considering they didn't buy anything at the trade deadline. So no question, more to lose. I mean, in, in terms of Aaron Rodgers' career, um, this is a guy who's the last two seasons with Matt LaFleur has won 13 games, has lost in the postseason, um, one of them being an NFC Championship game, the other one being the fir- in the first round against the 49ers at home. So no question. I mean, the Detroit Lions, if you lose this game, it just kind of echoes the fact and something we've already known. They're going for the number one overall pick. They're not good. Not a very good team. The defense isn't good. The offense can put up points, but for some reason can't seem to put up points in the second half. So... No question. I think if you're, if you're talking about expectations and who has more to lose, the easy answer is, is the Green Bay Packers, just because of the expectations around Green Bay and what they have going into every single season. Um, the Lions, <laughs> I mean, if you want to talk about expectations, fair expectations before the season, at least my opinion. Um, this isn't drinking the Kool-Aid. This wasn't because of hard knocks. was to win six games, minimum. It doesn't look like they're going to do that. And for the Green Bay Packers, this is a team that you still thought, many people, I know Ryan Romani was pretty spot on. He thought they'd go 7-10. and 10. What? Most people had them at least 9, the 10, 11 smoking? wins. It doesn't look like they're going to hit that this year. So Green Bay is under the most pressure to me. They have the most to lose. Green Bay has more to lose because they have playoff aspirations, right? If you're Detroit... You don't want to keep losing. I, and I know it's already, oh, we're thinking about the number one pick, and uh, we're doing this, and we're doing that. Uh, again, I, somebody justify it to me. You you finish 2-15. and 15. You're celebrating having the number one overall pick. How do you justify keeping this guy? Like, he's coaching for his job, or maybe I'm just the jackass who sees what's wrong. Maybe it's just me. Who knows? <laughs> but... Yes, the Packers have more to lose. They can't fall to 3-6. and six. They can't lose on the road to a Detroit team that just traded away probably their second best player on offense. Right. It doesn't add up to me. The Lions are turnover prone. They're penalty prone. They just shoot themselves in the foot. They if you're Matt LaFleur. They can't stop a nosebleed on defense. They can't stop the run either. No, they can't. Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Jones, Matt LaFleur have no excuse not to put together a game plan that takes advantage of the Detroit Lions' weaknesses. It's that simple. No excuse. They have the most to lose. They have the most pressure going into Sunday. The Lions' season is already over. They're 1-6. and six. They're not making the playoffs. They're not about to go 9-1 and one down the stretch or 8-2 and two down the stretch. That's not happening. Mm-hmm. Okay? Let's get fantasy land out of our heads. That's not happening. All right, cool. So now what is the focus for this football team? Clean it up. Stop with all the mental errors. Stop with the penalties. Stop turning the ball over. Force some turnovers. Continue to see Kirby Joseph's stock rise. Right. Continue to see Aiden Hutchinson's stock rise. Josh Pascal's stock rise. Now you're looking at player development. Who's going to be part of the team next year? Because I'm sorry, Detroit. Your team sucks this year. Yeah, season's pretty much over. And you're not. it's not that the team sucks that they're not capable of winning games. They're capable of beating Green Bay. 
They are more than capable. It is for some reason, under this head coach, they can't find a way to put it all together. That's it.